from Zipper Labs, and I am here to do a quick video on this Graflex um, upgrade that I just finished for Matthias. He sent me this. It was a it was a old Luxion Prism V4 build that he had had uh, done uh, years back, and it was broken. wasn't working right anymore. Uh, used to have a a Goth Knight chassis in it. And basically, he wanted it converted to a NeoPixel Teensy Saber, and uh, to keep it as accurate as possible, as well as just you know fix the stuff that was wrong with it. So went through it and did the upgrade, replaced the glass eye that was down here with the second red button, so it's more ESB accurate. I did the solder lines on the clamp here, and also swapped out the handle. This is a replica vintage Graflex handle now with the cold bolt clip instead of the Graflex 2.0 handle. This is a Graflex 2.0 um, so the handle's a bit different. It has threads and it screws on but for the sake of accuracy I wanted to do that. Uh, the other thing I did was I uh, affixed the cold bolt clip so it's actually on there really well now that was coming off, but let's get into the main parts of what is going on with this guy. Um, to begin with, it's got a one inch blade adapter, the custom saber shop blade adapter. Um, also, as you can see, there's new brass pins because some of those were missing. And I also countersunk the flathead screw so it sits flush now because that was actually bumped out because this hilt Graflex 2.0 hilt does not have a countersink for the head of the screw to go into. So it's just little things like that that uh, are nice for, you know, accuracy and details. But the main part of what we did here is swapped out the chassis. This is the Goth Padawan chassis for the 89 Sabres Graflex. Uh, with just a little bit of modification, the chassis fits quite nicely into the Graflex 2.0 or into a standard replica Graflex. All you have to do is drill and tap a set screw here and then cut a little bit of the top of the chassis off. There's an inner chassis tube. Actually, let me get a hex screw and I'll show you guys. It's easier to show you than to explain it. There's a inner part of the chassis and an outer part of the chassis. Mm, it's a bit tight. I don't want to go jacking it out. But there's an inner part of the chassis and an outer part of the chassis. And if you just remove the outer part of the chassis that goes from right here to about right here, then the inner part of the chassis will slide right into this um, custom saber shop blade holder or the Corbath 2.0 blade holder and then once it's in there if you have a set screw then it's locked in um, the custom saber shop one inch blade holder also has a corresponding button and uh, slides slide switch tab thing which is just a press fit you just press it in there but it gives you a nice option for an auxiliary button so that's what the auxiliary button is now and the switch wires can also be routed up through the blade holder so that they come out right about here. So your red button activation, as you can hear, really good, uh, really good action on that and on that guy. Um, I guess probably the best part about this guy um, is that it's got a removable battery. And this is designed to be removable 18650. What's supposed to be done is that in this section here, you would put a Keystone 18650 battery sled, which clips right in inside of this chassis. But if you want, the other option is to just add connectors directly to the chassis and a little bit of a pull tab kind of guy. And then you can use either 20 70s or 2170 batteries. So because Matthias wants to use this 
as a cosplay and a prop type thing for going to conventions and such. He wants to have basically as much battery life as is possible. So this is a five five amp hour battery, so it's gonna last a long time. But even if it dies on you, pull it out, swap in a new one, simple as that. And it will also take a different size battery, which is nice. So this guy that's in there is a 2170, as you can see. This guy right here is an LG 2650. And as you can see, that also fits just night, just fine. Um, it's, it's a tiny bit smaller, so it allows you to kind of tuck the little pull tab in, but either way, it's nice and solid. It's not going anywhere. So whatever battery you have to hand will work. And in fact, there's one other battery you can use if you have if you have one of these adapters here. You can use an 18650 in this guy too. This is a 2070 or 2170 adapter sleeve. Basically all you do is you slide this over the battery and then this together is now the same size as these guys. So with this adapter, you could use any of these three batteries with this guy. So this is just a super flexible, super handy setup for somebody who wants to get maximum battery life while at the same time having maximum flexibility for different battery options. But for the sake of this video, we're just gonna go with the 2170. It is, I believe, fully charged and ready to go. Um, you flip it around, get your main power switch here. Um, it's not totally necessary to add that because you could just pull the battery out and then you don't have to worry about having a kill switch. But if you're on the go, you don't necessarily want to pull the battery out, uh, put it in your pocket or something like that. That's dangerous, not really a good idea. So I thought it made more sense to just put the kill switch in. So she's now live. TC Saber V3 connected up in here, uh, fully programmed and fully loaded up with all the best smooth swing fonts. The only, only slight downside to this guy in this setup is that when you want to swap out the battery, you do have to. pull the Graflex clamp because as you can see when you take the bottom off you're not gonna be able to get this battery out because the Graflex cl clamp is going to be in the way so simple matter of sliding this guy down then pulling the battery now even though this is not threaded and even though this, this clamp that comes on the Graflex 2.0 doesn't have the tabs on the inside that would lock into the bottom and the top of the hilt, all you have to do is rely on the, uh, the clamp itself. And as long as you set this to be relatively tight, this guy's rock solid, it's not going anywhere. So you don't have to worry about that. I mean, you couldn't pull this out if you wanted to. She made activation up top. Nice shine through um, NeoPixel blade plug. And the set screw to keep the blade plug and the blade both in ta attached is the red button on the bottom. Just loosen that up, you know, one turn. Pinch the rabbit ears. And shake. There's your blade plug. It's a KR Sabres version 1 old school Graflex blade plug with a little mini blade that I built basically inserted into it. If you look down in there, it's a custom Sabre shop pogo pin style connector. Yeah, not really all that visible, but take my word for it, it's in there. but it fits in nice it locks in nice with this retention here let's 
put the blade in real quick. Now, the only thing about this guy is that because this uh, custom Saber Shop one inch blade holder that's in this guy is, was designed to be used with a Luxion electronic setup, the inner diameter of this, this portion of the blade holder has two different diameters. So from here to here, it's one inch. So the standard one inch blade will fit in it. But from here to here, it's slightly less than an inch. I'm not sure what the size is, but it's just under. But it's smaller enough that this blade only goes into here. And I had the blade connector set as deep as I could for stability sake, so it's around here, which meant that when I went to put the blade in to test it out, it wouldn't go all the way in. So solution was to just take some off the blade at the very bottom. So as you can see, the bottom, the first inch of the blade has just been thinned out a tiny bit. I did that with a uh, bench grinder, sandpaper, and a bench polisher. Um, but it's just a simple matter of making the blade a tiny bit thinner at the, at the base. So that way, she fits all the way in. Let's run for the blades. First one here is a light blue. It's kind of like an Anakin blue. Blade number two is a steel blue, which is even lighter. Three is, I think this is a sky blue, which is a little more blue, almost a neon blue color. And the fourth blade is regular blue, I think. Nope, I lied. That is yet another blue. I want to say that's Dodger blue. Purple here with a Mace Windu sound font. Green with the Return of the Jedi sound font. Yellow with the Corn Horn sound font. Uh, red with a Vader font. Fire font, fire blade. Blue fire blade. Coral fire blade. Blue Tron blade. Strobe. Electricity blade. Jedi Seizure Blade. Rainbow Blade, for fun. POV Blade. And Battery Indicator Blade, showing it's all the way full. And back to the beginning, I think. Yep. So the first blade is your pure blue. I was wrong on that. So the first blade is the standard blue. Um, all the different fonts that are on this are smooth swing. And um, that's really about it. This guy is pretty straightforward. Uh, it was mostly just a upgrade and repair. Uh, so Matthias, let me know if you have any questions at all. Um, if you want anything modified, tweaked, or added before I send it out. Um, I did also fix this little mounting screw here. This was really chewed up. It looked like somebody had gone at it with pliers. So I polished it and sanded it to smooth it up and clean it up. And that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. So thanks for watching, guys. And Matthias, I'll wait to hear back from you. And if there's anything you want to do, we'll do it. Otherwise, I'll get it in the mail to you.